What's up guys, Rolandas here. Today we're gonna be talking about 11 months after my head transplant surgery. For those of you who are new to this channel, I had my head transplant done with Dr. Bruno Ferreira in Portugal uh, 11 months ago, obviously. I had 3,659 grafts implanted only in the frontal area. And on this channel, I'm showing the reality of my hair transplant, how it exactly looks in different light conditions, uh, with different, like, you know, wet, dry, whatever it is, with some product, etc. With some nice close-ups, how my donor area looks like as well. So if you want to see some unbiased information and to know how exactly the hair transplant should look like in reality, that's the place to be. And I actually just uh, finished filming my uh, close-ups uh, of the frontal hairline. So obviously just wash my hair, blow dry it a little bit to make it dry. And I was ready to film my usual close-ups for you guys. And I just realized so many people are saying like, come on man, just do some hairstyle. And I realized I almost never in my videos like style my hair. Oh yeah. And I think this looks pretty bad. My hairstyle will change as soon as you're gonna press that like button. Come on, I know you didn't press it. You can just press... What do you think? Some people say that I look actually like Marco Reus. Do you think I look alike? I think it looks similar because of the hairstyle that I'm doing right now. But anyways, it's a great compliment. I never get anything like this, so yeah, I appreciate that. It's crazy to think about it, it's already 11 months after my surgery, and for the last couple of months I really didn't think like much about my hair at all. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about the <laughs> front, obviously. The crown, the balding crown, it's like I'm thinking about the whole time. Hence why I can have a second surgery, which, by the way, I'm talking to Dr. Bruno Ferreira right now, scheduling my second surgery, and it looks like it's gonna be sometime in June. It's like pushing way too far. I'm washing my hair, towel dried, uh, you know, blow dried, whatever it is. Like, it's very easy to do it. It doesn't cause me any problems at all. Like, I think at this moment, my hair behaves pretty much the same like it was in the donor area beforehand. So, uh, what I mean by that, it's not whitey, it's not kinky, it's like, it's pretty straight and it's really easy to manage it. It pretty much feels really, really soft and nice and everything. It's really cool. And also the length, it's pretty long. I cut it a couple of times, but just like a little bit, just to kind of, you know, uh, cut those split ends and I let it grow out longer and I promised you guys I'm not gonna be cutting my hair until end of January 2021 just to see how my a whole 12 month result looks like with long hair and we, you can actually see how long it can get actually in this time frame but after that I think I'm just gonna cut it a little bit short I'm pretty sure I'm gonna keep it like at this length or something it's gonna be much easier to style and I have to use uh, hair fibers or that much anyways I really don't think uh, longer hair, once again, do a slick back, it's gonna completely cover my crown. It, it's just not enough hair to give this like really good illusion. But hey, who knows? Maybe I'm gonna change my mind uh, by the end of January. So stay tuned for that. We'll see what's gonna happen. So as soon as I'm gonna get back from Dr. Ferreira about the whole plan, surgical plan of my second surgery, I'm gonna make a separate video on that. Also, people keep asking me what I'm using right now. So I'm not on Minoxidil, I'm only on Finasteride, one milligram every day for last about, what, 16 months or so. Uh, it's been great for the first 12 months. It kind of slowed down dramatically my hair loss But I was still shedding like you know 20 30 40 maybe hairs uh, when I'm showering So it's quite a lot still if you think about it how much hair I have right now native hair But to my surprise from month 14 roughly The shedding decreased even more so now I'm shedding in the shower basically like what five to ten hairs at most so I've seen a lot of people saying exactly the same, that the first year it kind of worked finasteride, but not as much. And then during the second year, they had even more improvement, even like more stabilization and possibly even more regrowth. So for my case, it was the same. I was using minoxidil with microneedling before my surgery. So I had a, a pretty good mid scalping crown. And then I stopped before surgery. I decided never to come back on it. And I lost ground, obviously. It was not a lot, but a little bit. And uh, I think right now my crown and mid scalp looks pretty much the same like it was looking after my minoxidil microneedling regimen. But now everything is due to finasteride. So it's much easier to sustain this result long term because I just need to pop one pill every morning. Job's done. In terms of shampoos, I actually was experimenting. I start, I just didn't you know, bought any, any random shampoo from the grocery store. And, and I was using it for like three weeks. And it was pretty good, but I noticed that on my second day, my hair is getting a bit more greasy than it was beforehand. So I was thinking maybe just because my hair is getting longer. So I decided to go back to Johnson & Johnson's baby shampoo. 
I used only that shampoo for the next two weeks and I noticed my hair were not getting as greasy as they were with this just a random shampoo. And then I went back again for another two weeks to their, again, this just a regular shampoo and my hair was not as greasy as it was the first time. So I think the takeaway from this is uh, it's a good idea to switch the shampoos around or stick to the baby shampoo. It, does, it's, it doesn't foam as much, let's say, but it cleans pretty well. I was using it for the first eight and a half months after the surgery, no problem. And to be honest, I don't really know how exactly it works, but it's just my experience. I don't know, like, did you find something similar? Comment down below if you had similar experience. I would be curious to know. Supplements, uh, I think at this point, everyone already knows where I'm standing on supplements. I think you don't really need any supplements for your hair transplant. Like you can, obviously you can use some, you know, hair supplements like that contains mainly biotin or whatnot. Uh, and what they're gonna basically do, they're just gonna make, they might make your hair look a little bit like shinier, if you know what I mean, like it's gonna look a bit healthier. But if like, if your diet is fine, I'm pretty sure you don't really need you know, to have any supplement for this particular case. I'm obviously using multivitamins, I'm using omega-3s and whatnot, like different vitamins, but just it's for overall health, not for hair. So if you're thinking whether or not you need to use any supplement uh, after a hair transplant, no you don't. So yeah, I cannot wait when I'm gonna do my second transplant. I won't need to worry about like my hair loss in my miscalping crown where it's like a little bit uh, bald right now. But it's still a little bit bothering me. So if I'm going out somewhere, it depends how I feel like. Sometimes I put there much. Let's say if I'm just taking a shower before I'm going out, uh, I'm gonna put there much. So you know, while my hair is wet, it's, that's basically the easiest application. And then I'm gonna dry out and style my hair and whatnot. So that's how I'm gonna go about it. But if I'm really in a rush, I'm just gonna put some hair fibers because it's much easier. It takes literally, what, like two seconds to do it. Just lift my comb over, put all over the fibers, put it back, <laughs> massage it a little bit, job's done. And I cannot wait actually to see how my hair looks like with uh, super short hair or let's say bust. Uh, so obviously on my second surgery, they're gonna bust my hair completely, you know, down. And that's gonna be the time when I'm gonna make a good quality picture and I'm gonna be able to count every single hair the new hair that's been implanted and compare it to my uh, immediately post-operation pictures. And in this way I can find out roughly like survival rate, if it makes sense. Like we're gonna see how much hair was implanted and how much hair survived after one year. I've never seen anyone doing it. So if you're curious to see it as well, make sure to subscribe to the channel, stay tuned. As soon as I'm gonna have my uh, second transplant, I'm gonna make a plenty of pictures, a lot of videos. So just to document it as much as possible. And it's gonna be much better than the first time. Okay, I think it's enough talking. Let's just have a look at my usual clothes, how uh, my situation looks right now. Overall, if you notice, my hair it looks so much thicker. So my hair is extremely thin, but like overall, even uh, on the direct uh, light in front of the window, it looks much thicker when I'm combing it through. You cannot see through as much as it was, let's say even two months ago, which is crazy. So it's really encouraging to see more and more improvement. And I hope these uh, videos are actually helping you guys to find out what's the reality of the hair transplant, especially if you got like a thin hair like mine. It's a really great video. 
And by the way, if you didn't press that like button, uh, give me a solid do it right now. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, by the way, Happy New Year!